little bit about why you should be listening to me about how to bend wood. Well, uh, like many uh, good woodworkers, I fully believe I am the best woodworker on the planet. And I know I'm not the only one. Everybody, lots of woodworkers think that way, and I, and I am no exception. Um, having said that, I'm not good at everything. And bending wood is not one of my strongest points, even though I'm the best woodworker in the world. So you are watching a tutorial video uh, from someone who doesn't really know how to bend wood all that well. So um, before you turn the video off and try to find something else on YouTube, I do have two ways to bend wood. So uh, I'll show you these two ways. The first way is gonna surprise you. Uh, the best thing to do if you need some curved wood for your surfboard is don't bend it at all. I've got a stringer here right for the cowl gun and I've got a piece of polonia here that you know typically somebody would rip this up on their table saw on the bandsaw and then just fight like a dog trying to steam it and bend it and doing all this when all you needed to do was just cut it the right shape. It's just so simple. So. Uh, now, the, you, uh, all the other uh, best woodworkers on the planet might be thinking, well, the problem with cutting that way is that you are in some place a little bit cutting not, not, uh, slightly across the grain, whereas if you, if you rip a board on a table saw or bandsaw with the grain 100% and then bend it, you have grain that flows through and can be stronger. But really, unless you split the wood, and then bend it, you still have grain running off and opportunities for breakage. So knowing that, what I've done is I have a piece of polonia here that, um, you know, out of a few pieces, I found one that it's actually, it, the grain is kind of running the way I'm gonna go anyway. So this is gonna be just as strong as if I had ripped it straight and then bend it. So I've laid out my stringer. Just go ahead and trace that out. The other thing great about this is there's there's not going to be any spring back. Whenever, whenever you bend wood, you get it to stick, but it's going to come back a little bit. So I don't have to deal with any of those issues with this. We're going to cut this on the bandsaw, and it's going to be the shape of this stringer. One of our number one questions is, is how thick to make the planking on our surfboards. Generally, you want it to finish out at about one, uh, one quarter of an inch. So I usually rip them about five sixteenths so that uh, after final shaping and sanding, I finish out at a quarter. Avoid using balsa for the top. I'm just I'm moving this template over. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna eyeball about five sixteenths. Scratch my next line. So uh, that's it. Uh, we're going to go inside the barn and start cutting this on the bandsaw. Okay, so that is one way to do it. Get right off the bandsaw, it's going to be a perfect bend. Okay, so the, the next way uh, that I want to teach you, we're going to actually take straight pieces and bend it. Um, again, I'm not great at, at steaming lumber, those sort of things, so I have another trick up my sleeve. So I'll show you that next. So my trick for the next one is I picked out set, uh, some redwood boards that are right out of the mill. These boards weigh an absolute ton. These weigh more than oak. The reason why I picked out the heavy ones is they are full of water. There is no steaming necessary with these boards. They're very heavy. So uh, no steaming required. The moisture, you couldn't get any more moisture in this wood by steaming it. Uh, rip this up and it bends easy. So let's go back into the barn and we'll rip this up on the bandsaw.
Okay, so I ripped that piece off on the bandsaw. And once I open that up, I can feel right here that this, how really how wet this piece of wood is. So that, that's exactly what I wanted. The moisture is already all in there. And uh, this piece is almost ready to bend. And I say almost ready because you probably can't see this in the camera, but my bandsaw doesn't make a super smooth cut. It's got lots of little scratches from the bandsaw blade. If you try to bend this, you, you probably, you know, do all right, but these, each one of these little scratches is a place for a crack to begin. So you have a little bit more success if you actually have a little bit smoother, smoother surface, just so it doesn't have a place to start breaking. So um, really a table saw, with a nice blade would be better to make these little rippings. Uh, I promise to use my bandsaw on this whole uh, project. So if you're doing it on a bandsaw as well, take a little hand plane and get rid of the uh, all those little scratches. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now we have a super wet board, also green. green correct term for wood that is is recently a live tree is green but wet moisture high moisture content that's what you're looking for so the next uh, you can just you, you can clamp this into a form or another one of my little cheater things I, I've done many times in the past a lot of times I just bend a lot of wood I don't even know where or how I'm gonna use it just pin it onto something and put a little weight on it And you're going to break a few, but so be careful about how much weight you put on it. But uh, gravity is going to just let that settle down and just leave it for however long it takes. Depending on your area, you know, it might take a week. Uh, if you're in, you know, a desert climate, just a few days, and this stuff just dries right out. It doesn't take months. So obviously, you want to leave it in a place where it's not on your workbench and in your way. Put it out back somewhere and just leave it. When you come back, this is what you're going to have. These are some pieces that of cedar, cedar fence board. I use the exact same method for this. So these are just bone dry. This piece, this wood is back to feather light, the way you know cedar should be. So that is my other way to bend wood without having to steam. So I've taught you two ways. I still have a problem. Although this wood is bent perfectly to go on a surfboard, I already know it is not perfect for this surfboard. You probably can't see this on the camera, but there's not enough bend. It's close, but I, I need more. So. The reason, the reason why this is only close is I just randomly bent them. And uh, I didn't, uh, I, I needed to bend them for this particular surfboard. Now a lot of the, the Brad Tucker kits that uh, we build, this would be plenty. Uh, I would say most of the kits, this is, uh, you know, bending it this way is fine. Some of them you're gonna need a little, get a little more aggressive. So what I'm gonna do is the same method, but I'm gonna force it into a form. Uh, trying to uh, snap it into the form, which that can be a, a challenge. The, the way I just let gravity bet this, any more than this, and it probably would have snapped. So it's a bit of a hat trick to get it to go further. So I'll make a form and we'll get on to that next. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a real simple form out of a piece of scrap plywood that I had kicking around in the project, in the scrap pile. Got my cow gun stringer again, and could just trace this out and bend it to that, but the problem is the uh, the wood's going to spring back, so this isn't going to be enough of a bend. So I'm, I'm just going to scratch it just so I have a point of reference. And then I'm going to, not sure exactly how yet, but I'm going to scratch a line that's a little tighter. So, I guess what I could do, I, I would say we, we need to be tighter by a good, a good inch, a good inch. So I'm just going to, I'm going to eyeball a mark over here, 
one inch and let's just this doesn't have to be exact so I'm just going to take a little bit of the stringer and just sort of ferret it in so I have a very similar line but a steeper bend than what I actually need because I'm just going to guesstimate that that's going to spring back an inch after I let this dry out. If I let it dry out long enough, it might stick just about there, but I know I'm not going to have the patience to let this sit for a month. Uh, but I think after a good week or so, uh, this will this will only spring about back about one inch and I'll be good. So, uh, let's go back to the bandsaw and rip this stuff up. Uh, one more thing that I'm going to do on the bandsaw is uh, when I'm clamping this onto this form, a lot of my clamps are not so long. So I'm just going to eyeball in, I don't know, you, you know, everybody's got different length clamps, but depending on your length of the clamps, just kind of kind of eyeball around six inches. Six inches of this three-quarter plywood is going to be enough strength that it's not going to move and it'll have a somewhat parallel line to start clamping onto it. So we'll go cut that out. So I've ripped this little scrap with this edge being a little bit tighter bend than my cow gun nose. But I would try to get that as smooth as you can. The smoother this is, the smoother little bumps and hard spots, all those hard spots are places for the, the wood to uh, break over. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is just clamp this around this corner. One thing I know is gonna happen is I already know this is more bend than this wood is gonna wanna go. I'm gonna use this, uh, steel strap to hold it in place and the reason why I'm going to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to intentionally I'm going to intentionally just snap this end of this one right here when, when you snap a board for, well first of all this test just tells me that this cross grain is really fairly severe on this piece of uh, redwood so this might not be the right piece to start with we're going to see what happens but um, hopefully the grain on the end I'm actually going to be bending is a little bit more. But what I wanted to show you, I'm going to try to break again. What's going to happen when a piece breaks, the backside blows out is really what happens. So if you were able to control that, that blowout, you see how that blew out? If you were able to control that, you might be able to get this piece to bend a little bit more. So I've got three pieces here because really... I put, I'm going to bend three at a time. I don't want to bend a ton because the more wet wood I put in there, the more moisture it's going to retain and it's going to take longer to dry out. Um, I want to have two redwood accent stringers in here. And assuming one is a, two are going to turn out better than the, the last one, I'm going to go ahead and just bend three. One of them, uh, hopefully I'll get at least two good ones out of here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rock this around and make sure I land at least past there. Come down to this side and uh, got a whole bunch of my clamps out of here. Clamp this is in position right here with this little strap. This is just a piece of uh, steel strap that I bought at Lowe's, my local home store, that is three quarter wide, just like the three quarter form I'm using. What that strap's going to do is I'm going to gradually work my way this way around the corner and that strap's going to hold that outer piece from blowing out, I hope. So, let's get going with that. And the closer you put your, uh, your clamps, less work each individual one is doing. And the less of a curve you're, you're going around all at once. See this is already going around the corner. Well, this is going around the corner just fine now. But let's see what happens when I get into the severe corner. And you can almost tell in advance it's it's not going to crack. It's got this steel strap. It's 
giving it nowhere to go. Okay, now, now I'm uh, starting to use a little bit more pressure, so I'm going to hang this end off just so I can get into the inner corner of my clamps a little better. And for the same reason. Grab a strap of wood to elevate that a little bit so I can get my get the meat of my clamp on there. Yeah, that's just going right around the corner. Beautiful. That last one didn't close up all the way. But this one's gonna help it. Look at that. That is doing exactly what I want it to do. I don't hear any complaining. No creaking, groaning. I can guarantee you that without this piece of steel strap on there, this piece would have snapped already. I heard a little creak in there, but I think that was one of my clamps and not the wood. I'm pretty much there. See? Knuckleheads can bend wood. I left this little scrap running wild over there because I already knew that I wanted a little something extra up here. That made it all cut the way around. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to keep tightening these ones. But that made it all the way. No cracking sounds. It, it held that with ease. Okay, so there you have it. Point it towards the camera. So you can see this is a pretty, pretty severe bend. It's more bend than the nose of my cow gun. So this one, I'm going to give it a week. Only because it's so much, uh, so much of a bend. I'm going into fall here. So there you have it. There's two ways to bend wood without steaming. <laughs>